Welcome. I uh, hope you are all safe and dry out there. My name is Jody Ponto. I am the Eastside Culture Crawls Administrator, and uh, you are joining us for our series of online artist demos that we're presenting this week in advance of the 25th annual Eastside Culture Crawl that is happening this weekend, November 18th to 21st. Uh, so before we begin, I would just like to acknowledge that we are living and working and creating on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Um, so yeah, this is the first of our demos. Uh, tonight we have Nima Nasiri with us, who is an amazing artist from the ARC. Uh, he is an enamel artist who paints on copper, so he's going to be demoing that with his lovely assistant Nadia this evening. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to them, and then you should definitely go check them out this weekend at the ARC. And you can find all the information um, about the Culture Crawl and uh, about the artists at, on our website at culturecrawl.ca. So without further ado, let me turn off myself and pass it over to you guys. Thank you so much, Jody, for the beautiful introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Nadia. Um, I hope that everyone is safe uh, tonight. I am helping my husband, Nima, uh, who is an enamel artist. Uh, he recently moved to Canada, so his English is so-so. And I'm gonna be talking um, and we're gonna go over to his side and then you'll see how he prepares um, his medium, which is copper. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And then if anyone has any questions, um, they can go over that as well. So basically, um, enameling was done on gold, silver, copper, and glass, as far as I know, but Nima's medium is copper. Um, if everyone is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit of demo of how he preps his uh, pieces. So here is just paint cover. So at this stage, you need to clean it properly. Um, cleaning is, uh, they usually use uh, hot water, a bit of acidic solution to clean up the copper. And this is just before cleaning, and this is after cleaning. So it needs to be really shiny. And then, uh, or maybe before we have Can you hear me properly, Jenny? I'm not sure. I can hear you. Sorry, I was just um, trying to change uh, the audio source because I couldn't hear you from the computer. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I just need to turn off one of the um, audio sources. Okay. Is it good now? <laughs> yes, all good. Okay, should I start from the beginning? Sorry, everyone. I wasn't sure if you could hear me. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll just go and uh, Nima would, would like to say hi to everyone. I don't know, Nima, if you're ready. Maybe just... Hi, everyone. I, uh, my name is Nima. I'm an enamel artist. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't speak English very well. Uh, this is my wife. Uh, she will. So we are uh, over talking. <laughs> <laughs> so back to. Enameling, which Lima's uh, specific medium is copper. I was saying that uh, the surface, the copper needs to be really clean. So after he cleans it up, he's gonna add a white layer of enamel paint, which comes in powder um, format. So they mix it up with water. And then if it's on a bigger surface, they can spray it. If it's on a smaller surface, he brushes it up. And then this at this stage, it gets baked. So it's fused to copper. 
and then usually the first uh, coat is not good enough. So they, after it's baked, they add another layer and they bake it again to get that really white, clean surface. And then um, if you, well, I can show you that Nima usually starts painting over the white surface just using a really fine brush. So what he's working with is enamel paint, which is glass-based. He mixes it with water and with really fine brush, he can directly start painting on the white surface and adding more details. Or if he wants to add another color on the background, which I think this part is probably interesting if uh, Nima can show everyone how to add another coat of color to white surface. We're gonna do that now. Nima, do you wanna show them how to do the blue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to add another color on the background instead of white, then here he's gonna show you how he's gonna do that. So basically that's enamel paint that again comes in powder format. He mixes it with water. And then this is how he's just gonna use a bigger brush. If you wanna show it up close because that's really important. It's really important to apply a very even layer of um, paint, which it, when, when you work with it, with it, it feels like you're working with um, acrylic, but it's not the same thing. So you wanna make sure that your brush, you use the, your brush like in a way that you cover the whole surface like very evenly. You don't wanna add too much in one part and leave up some other parts. Uh, or I think it might crack if you don't uh, paint it like evenly and it's gonna get dry really quick. Like it's not gonna take that long to get that dry surface. And then when it's dry, at this stage, he's gonna use a compass to measure his design. If you wanna show it up close, that would be really great. So what he's gonna, he's doing is he's, just measuring to find the middle of his uh, pattern. And then he's just gonna start from there scratching the, the blue layer that he added to just go back to that white surface. This is uh, one technique to start working on enamel you know, like on copper surface with enamel paint. So, which is like painting with enamel paint on copper, if that makes sense. Uh, so he's gonna be just, uh, if you don't mind showing this really up close. So basically what he does, it's gonna be freehand. It starts his pattern from the center and he develop it to, you know, to come up with uh, a magical pattern, I would call it. Uh, he's, the way he's holding it and then just cleaning up the edges is also, I find it very interesting. It's just, uh, I think, taking the extra paints off the edges to have a clean edge. And this could be fixed at the end too. So that's not something that that's it. He can come back to that and fix the edges if he wants to add another color. But I think what he's doing is he's just scratching up the paint, the blue paint, to go back to that white surface. And then on top of that white, the first, very first layer white surface, he's gonna draw more and like add more color. There. So what, what you see, I hope that everyone can see it pretty well because this is the part that I find very interesting. He's just using little dots to indicate where he's gonna start his like drawing to look very like, I think magical at the end. <laughs> That's my way of looking at it. It's, I found this part really interesting. This probably requires a lot of practice 
in my opinion, because you're not supposed to touch the surface. If let's say if you touch it with your nail or you know with the tip of your finger, you can you know you can screw your pattern. <laughs> so the way he's holding the plate and he's holding his little wooden tool, which is by the way, I don't know, sorry, I, I think I didn't mention that he's to scratch off the paint, he uses a little uh, sharp piece of wool, like the, the tip is pretty sharp, or he uses a needle, like a tool like this, to scratch off the paint. Again, to go back to that first white glaze, I call it glaze, but it's enamel paint. It's not like glaze, like ceramic glaze. I guess you could call it glaze. It's because uh, it's baked and it's fused to copper. But this is he, how he starts his uh, drawing on enamel pieces. Um, so I think this part, the way he's uh, developing his design or his pattern is, uh, again, it does require a lot of practice but I've seen that's the way he also teaches his uh, students, just uh, the measuring is gonna be the same for everyone. So from the center, he finds the center and he starts like um, just doing the divided to even like pieces and then he connects those dots together with this little Kirby designs. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, if there's any name for those patterns, but um, I, I'd say that usually he, his patterns are like inspired from nature. Like a lot of um, patterns that you see in carpets or, you know, in really beautiful, um, like fabrics that they're made, handmade or, yeah, anyways. So that's how he starts his pattern with scratching the blue paint that he added. And then he can just go on and on on that part. I don't know if you want, he probably wants to. Yeah, maybe, okay, now we can, you, you, we can show how you add more color. I'm just gonna um, also maybe <laughs> quietly talk in Farsi with him so he gets, he understands what we're gonna do. <laughs> so I hope everyone is on the same page with us. Now he's back to like adding more details. And as you can see, he uses a really fine brush. By the way, those brushes are handmade um, those are specific brushes that he uses. And they're very fine. So this part, that drawing part, I, I say that it requires a lot of practice. That's not something that it can be, you know, <laughs> probably achieved overnight. But that's how he basically starts his drawing on any piece. and. Um, by the way, if uh, you want something more curvy and like, like more like a, like this was or something more like this little ball, it, it's a really, it's really tricky because uh, he has to plan it in advance in order to know which part he starts working on, let it dry, and then he has to find a way to hold it so he doesn't scratch up the the paint and then um, I know that he can add layers of colors before he bakes it and by the way uh, this uh, the white paint is baked at 600 to 750 degree um, Celsius degree. And then the next stage that he's gonna bake this painting when it's finished, 
He bakes it at about 900 um, Celsius. And the baking, uh, enamel baking is different than ceramic baking. It's not, it doesn't require a long uh, firing. It's usually a really short firing, depending on the size, like something in that size that he's working on. That's probably uh, at, after this painting is finished, it probably takes him about two, three minutes to fire it. So we're also gonna show a bit of uh, firing process. Uh, he uses a little jewelry kiln for firing. And he has a piece ready here. Maybe we can show you, like these are the pieces that he, he finished, by the way. This piece, he left some of the copper surface uh, without any paint. So he painted it with white, those little patterns that you see. And he scratched it off to get that white pattern back. So basically he has two layers of paint on that one, just white and blue. And then he has added some lining, like outlined the patterns with black, with a really fine brush. And I think he is ready to, Bring that in the kiln. It's just gonna, as you can see, the kiln is ready. It's gonna put it in there. And then there's a little window right here. Uh, I don't think we wanna bring the camera too close, but uh, he's usually, I don't, like there's no, nothing like a cone or like ceramic baking. There's, like he just knows by experience he washes it and then as soon as he told me that as soon as the paint looks a bit shiny in there, it's ready to come out. So with enameling, the tricky thing is you don't wanna leave it in there for a long time because you can burn the paint and you can lose all the patterns and you can turn all brown and black. So we're just gonna give that a few minutes and watch Nemo to bring it out and see what the baking process does to enamel painting. I find this part really interesting because it's, this is the magic part <laughs> anyways. So we're just gonna give it a few minutes and I'm gonna show you this one here. This is another example that he worked on a white surface. Uh, so basically he applied the white coat, baked it, applied another layer of white, baked it again and then that was ready for painting so he just used the brush and you know enamel paint and free hands draw those patterns this is all done again so the way he works he can add more color on the background or just start painting on the white background and again uh, enameling was traditionally used for decorative purposes so old time as far as I know, they use enameling for decorating jewelry, accessories, like crowns and stuff for kings and queens. And because it's a very durable material. And he's also using, the, uh, I, I think he's also creating more of a beauty with his like art. That's my opinion again. <laughs> I wish he could talk himself, but we'll see. So I'm just, I can see that he's just looking at it. I don't know how he knows when it's ready, but he said that when it's shiny, it looks shiny to him. He can both pull it out. And let's see, we're just gonna wait for, Nemo, did you wanna say something? Yeah. Is it ready? No, no. yes. <laughs> you wanna say hi? <laughs> Another hi? Uh, okay. How many more minutes? Okay, so I think two, one. So we just, the master is using his eyes. I don't know how he knows, but this is the part that I love. If we can look at that close by. So uh, so this is out of the kill. It's really hot. And I've noticed that when he brings the piece out, he also um, 
dab it with his spoon. Let me show you then. Stuff. Yeah, he so he dabs it like that. So this like the piece doesn't because it's really hot. So he he's making sure that it stays flat. These are all just a little tricks that he uses to make sure that it comes out perfectly. So here goes another piece that he finished painting. And yeah, so this is, in this piece particularly, he only has a few colors like the blue and black that it looks similar to blue to me but usually when there are more colors it's really interesting to watch how the colors are coming out because when he pulls it out it's it looks pretty dark and then he the color as if it's revealing itself to me that part is really magical but yeah we're just waiting for the next piece I, again i just want I, I want everyone to see like how important this part is because, and I don't know how, again, he just knows by experience when to pull it out and he's looking at it to make sure that the colors are not burnt or anything. And sometimes um, if you don't apply the paint properly and evenly, it can also crack. So it's like ceramic baking like you, it, you can have accidents and from their point of view if it cracks it's not perfect it's not a good work anymore but I kind of like this kind of accidents too he doesn't <laughs> well let's see and here comes another piece out of the oven oh yeah so this one if we can see close by can we just have some lights so I don't know if you can see it, but the colors are really magical. Like, and it's possible that you lose some of the colors if it's not baked properly. I think it's really hot, so we can't really have the camera pretty close to it, but I hope that everyone can have a close up. Um, so that is, Yeah, so that's done. That's base. I can, uh, we can come back here. I'd like to go over this again. I don't know how clear um, my explanation was. I hope that was clear. I just wanna go over this again and briefly explain for those who, who are interested in enameling and don't know anything about enameling. One more time. So the way he starts working on copper, the surface needs to be really clean. Traditionally in Iran, they usually add a white coat to have a really clean surface and also to protect the uh, copper from oxidizing. And this, at this stage, they coat it once, bake it, coat it another layer and they bake it again. So it's twice by this stage. And then if it wants to start painting on the white surface right away, like drawing with his fine brush, he could with a white background. If he wants to have more of a painterly effect like this one, which he recently worked on its Lionsgate bridge. Um, so he adds the paint, he scratches off, can I have that tool? He scratches off the paint before it's baked. I can touch that now because it's baked. This is just a demo. But before it's baked, it's really powdery. So he scratches off the paint to go back to the white surface. And then he adds more colors and he adds more details. And then again, he bakes it. And we can go back to what he's working on again to see what kind of tools he uses just to create all those little fine details and again, um, he's done some painterly stuff with enamel paint as well, which is uh, really interesting because enamel paint is 
a little bit tricky to work with and paint with, with it, in my opinion, because it's not like oil or watercolor. You have to come up with, um, you have to be creative to create shades and uh, depths. Like this is an example that he worked yeah, because we have a really small kiln, he's been working on pixelated objects too. So this is a painting that he did. And if you want to look close by, I'm just going to put it actually so you don't you won't see just my nails. <laughs> um, so to get those really fine details, um, he uses the tip of his brush to add layers of colors to create shadows and get that two-dimensional um, feeling <laughs> and the painterly feeling. And I can show, he's been also working on some sculpture, sculpture forms. So this is something that he made. This is not finished yet, but this is an example of seeing what the, the paint, the painterly white enamel looks like on copper. And then he's gonna work on this and paint on this. And I think we're just gonna show a bit of his work that we're showing here. Um, so he's been, uh, maybe I can show, this is, okay, let's just start with these ones. So um, these vases, these are, by the way, traditionally ready-made objects. So that's a totally different skill to make this objects with copper. So what an enamel artist does uh, traditionally in Iran is painting on the surface of an object, a ready object, which this is in uh, copper covered with that white enamel paint and then paint on it. So you can imagine that because you're not supposed to touch the surface before it's baked. It's really tricky to hold it. I've seen them holding it like that, painting on it. It's really tricky, but um, here's more of a traditional object that they paint on. And Nemo has been working on more of a, uh, he's been taking a different approach and he's been like creating some patterns that he loves and he grew up with into a like a two dimensional kind of image. So you can frame it and I guess enjoy it. They look like tiles, but these are all copper. Uh, it's not tied. <laughs> Some people think that those are ties. And he's been doing a bit of like painting on it. Uh, yeah, so we can probably just show everyone. I don't know if uh, anyone has any questions. Maybe we can have some questions and then uh, if you can. I see one question here. Sure. Um, and if anybody else has any questions, feel free to uh, type them in. Um, the first question was, what is the name uh, and the brand of the paint that he's sure. using? Sure. So that's, uh, that's actually, uh, maybe that I, I share our story. It's uh, quite interesting because uh, Nemo moved to Canada from Iran in end of January, and it was quite a challenge for us to find the right supplies. And uh, we had a few really great artists like Jan Smith that helped us to find out where to find our supplies and paint um, because it's, um, it was, it's a really totally different approach. We, we don't have other anomalous artists here in Canada. As far as I, I know, a couple of them, they do really beautiful stuff, but his work is a slightly different. So it was a bit of challenge for us to find the right enamel and right kiln and right tools, but he made it happen. What he's working with is sunshine on glaze. If uh, anyone is interested, we can share some links that um, another artist shared with us, Jan Smith. She was really helpful. I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank her as well. She helped us a lot. She's amazing. Uh, I'm sure that some of you probably know her. 
Uh, yeah, so this is Sunshine on Blaze. That's the brand. And they come in this little, this, these are the one that Nemo chose so far. Uh, again, he's pretty new in Canada. So all this stuff that he's working here is also a new experience for him because uh, his like the paints that they were using in Iran was slightly different. I don't know what the brand was, the one that he used in Iran. In fact, he doesn't know that too because the way they buy it here, they don't have a brand name or anything to buy it <laughs> from someone that they know. But yeah, we got it from Sunshine on Glaze. That's what it's called. Hope that answered the question. It's the train track. All right. Did that answer the question? Yeah, that was a great answer. That's all the questions so far. Great. I don't know if, uh, if you want us to share anything else in terms of. Uh, He's still working on that piece. Wonderful. Here, let me. Yeah, so we keeps working on that one. Usually a piece like that uh, takes him about, uh, depending on the pattern, like how details, how much details he wants to add. But that, that, that can be finished in an hour or so. That kind of pattern that he's working on. But if it's like a, something more painterly and more details, that it takes longer. People always like to know how long does it take to finish a piece. But I know that some of these pieces that they're very detailed, they're, it could take four months. But the smaller one can take about, you know, a couple of hours or a few days. Yeah. Wow, that's so amazing. That's so wonderful. Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing your work and your process. You're welcome. That's so great to see. That was so cool to see. I, I've never seen that before. And I, I think that's probably true for a lot of people who are, are tuning in. Great, thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, so you guys are in, uh, Nima's in the ARC, as in what studio number? 308. 308. So everybody make sure to go visit uh, the ARC Studio 308 this weekend, November 18th to 21st for the Culture Crawl. Um, we're open Thursday and Friday from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye now. Bye.